Hey guys, welcome back to your Lake Fork Guide. Another episode of the Guides Network. Got my boy Mike McFarland. Baby. TheLakeForkGuide.com. Be sure you check him out. And I am Billy Lawson at YourLakeForkGuide.com. If this is the first time you're watching one of our videos. Hmm. If this, yeah. If this is the first time that you're watching one of our videos, we sure appreciate you stopping by. We do a lot of in-depth instructional. We also do a lot of just kind of relaxed, fun atmosphere on the water, cutting up, being a couple knuckleheads, because pretty much everybody hangs out with me. He's got to be a knucklehead, or they just don't get to hang out with me, because that's how we roll. And he picked me. I know I'm a knucklehead, so knuckleheads and knuckleheads get along. He's what they call, down there at Lake Falcon, they call him Muy Grande Knucklehead. <laughs> The biggest one there is. <laughs> Mucho grande. <laughs> but hey guys, today we're going to talk to you about arguably one of the most influential and game-changing baits that has come into the bass fishing world in the last several years, especially for Maybe the fall, ever. winter, and early like pre-spawn spring bite. Today we're going to talk about how to catch them on an Alabama rig. You know the Alabama rig, you know, started several years back now. Mr. Paul Elias blew it out at Lake Gunnersville on the old man's umbrella rig, and and, and it was kind of a deal where it was a, it was a tough late fall cold water bite, and nobody was catching them. You know, it was like 10, ba 10 pound bags, 12 pound bags on Lake Gunnersville, which is unheard of. But Paul Elias discovered this Alabama rig bite, and he was catching 25, 30 pounds a day. He walked away with it, and it became a race to the tackle store to get Alabama rigs, and yep. the guys that didn't get them in time. Yep. They just weren't in contention. That's right. And that just goes to show and goes to speak to this bait that, guys, I'm telling you, they don't, you know, it's not as good as it was when it very first came out. It was, it was like magic when it first came out. But even now, after the fish have seen it for years, it still holds true that if the fish are on the Alabama rig and you're not throwing it, you're not fishing for first. Yeah, you ain't, you're missing out. They're just not going to bite anything else as good as they will when they get on that Alabama rig deal. When it first came out, honestly, the first four, five major four-day events, the top ten places, first through tenth, we're all Alabama rigs. And, um, and it seems like every year uh, when we get the cold, cold water in the wintertime and, you know, late fall and early winter and even into pre-spawn, you know, when that bite gets tough, and you can't really go catch them on a trap, and you can't really can't catch them it. on a jig. That's right. Seems like you pick that Alabama rig up, and if you hold it in your hand long enough, make enough casts, you'll find an area that's holding some fish that want to eat that Alabama rig, and you'll catch those good quality fish that you just can't catch doing anything else. Right. And I think they seem to, sometimes, they really appears that, you know, you may catch a fish on a rattle trap, you may catch a second fish. Right. But it seems like this Alabama rig can turn the whole doggone school on. It fires them up. That's what I mean. You can catch... Yeah. Quality and numbers like just nothing else will when they it get on gets it. It's more and more and more. It just really turns them on. Well, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the setup and kind of the gear that we use out here. Today we're on Lake Welsh, but man, we've been using this on Lake Fork here lately. And That's right. it's one of the only things that'll get you bit out there because it's been kind of that situation where it's been tough. And that Alabama rig's been about one of the only deals you can count on day in, day out to get some bites. That's right. Of course, it's a little different on Fork. There's not the vegetation or certainly not the hydrilla that we got here. So we're doing it deeper, but it's still the same. Totally deal. different tactic, but we're still using ambush edges and ambush points, whether it's timber, yep. bridge pilings, bridge corners, piled up in a ditch, docks, points, yep. like all this stuff is the same. It's an ambush edge where the fish tend to maybe want to suspend a little bit when it's tough in the winter, and man, they'll just eat this Alabama rig when they won't eat yep. nothing else. So gear and setup, give you guys a quick breakdown on this deal right here. Start with the rod, reel, and line. Uh, you know, 20 pound line is kind of a minimum. 
I know guys that throw it on braid because you know you can get some money tied up in these rigs. Man, I don't like throwing it on braid. That braid, we got a lot of timber in our lakes. That braid will cut grooves in that timber and get your rig hung up. And I actually throw it on fluorocarbon a lot. Uh, if I'm throwing a really heavy rig that I'm trying to get deep, I'll throw it on mono yep. to absorb the shock and, and not stress of throwing that bait all day. I actually want that rubber band effect of mono to absorb that stress on the knot. But typically I'm throwing quarter ounce or lighter heads and, and I mean, I can't remember the last time I threw anything bigger than that. And when I'm doing that, I'm comfortable with fluorocarbon. And so that's what I usually throw. Well, I can tell you firsthand that I even started throwing it on 100 plus braid because I was real concerned in, in West Coast losing these rigs. Right. And it's, it gets even worse because all you got to do is get a backlash. And that's so heavy. The projectile's so heavy, it'll snap 100 pound braid. Sounds like a 22 gun. Yeah. You know, pow. So I, I dropped down to the same 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon or old mono, depending on yeah. my scenario never have any problems and I'd let her have it. Uh, you know on the reel I like a mid-gear ratio reel because there's times when I need to keep this bait up high so I need to speed it up but there's a lot of times when I gotta creep it. Yeah. And so that mid-gear ratio reel allows me to go low to high the yep. best out of all the gear ratios so I use about a 6-3 to 1 on the reel. Uh, the rod, now the rod's real important. Very. Here's the rod selection. Get the biggest, baddest, strongest, toughest one you can. Uh, <clears throat> It needs to be close to eight foot if it's not eight foot. Eight foot's really the deal. You're gonna need a lot of a lot of length, a lot of whip, a lot of centrifugal force to throw this big old awkward thing right here, you know, with somewhat of an ease. Uh, the one I'm using six inch lux rod, eight foot heavy with a moderate tip. Honestly, I could do with a little stronger tip on an Alabama rig rod, but when they bite it, I like having that tip so I don't snatch it away from them because it is still winter time and they will hit it and not get it takes them a little bit to load up on it sometimes so I kind of like having that tip I so the for, same thing for me for me the eight foot heavy with a moderate moderate heavy uh, moderate fast tip is the way to go and six cents makes a rod that's just perfect for it I found the same with the tip um, you're not really snap casting this like you would fire right in the base. You, you we let it have it but you know it's more of a lofting loading toss um, and I have found that that tip is is uh, is important to me too especially for you yeah. normally like we said there you don't really have to set the hook they're going to load up on it and you just lean in it well here's a quick tip maybe we should be covering this in retrieves but when you feel one bite it if you can hold back on yeah. swinging and just keep reeling hard to do when you feel one load on up load up on it man just don't swing just well, keep reeling so sometimes that's real hard too. boom boy and they'll just stop you reel handling your reel. you just got to grind through it and just keep reeling Hey, you got them open jig hooks and everything, you'll hook that fish, you know. And if you'll just keep it coming at the same rate, usually another one will jump on there, you'll catch two at a time. Um, but if you set the hook, you kind of pull that fish away from the group, and you, you know, you don't always catch that second one. So that's kind of a inside tip right They're there. Pretty doggone cool. I have a couple, two, two or three pound, or two or three bass and one cast on one yeah. rig. I, it's been done many a times, and I'm gonna tell you, that's the key to get it consistently, is to not swing, man. Just keep reeling, and, and that's the deal on that. I mean, the, when it was first out, that's what we did. We just kept going, because we knew more were coming. Sure. That first year it came out, they were on it so hard and heavy, it was just, keep coming, baby. There's another one coming. That's Don't awesome. swing. Don't swing. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the umbrella rig itself. There's a lot of them out there. Yum makes a really good one. Man, I'm gonna tell you, in Texas, we don't have the cleanest, clearest water, and I don't know that it matters. If I did have clean, clear water, I'd still throw this. I always am throwing blades. Yeah. I always have blades on my rig. I either throw four blades or eight blades, generally is what I throw. And there's a lot of brands out there that make a good one. Man, you know, oh, he Taylor over there at Smash Tech, he makes a lot of great baits, and this sucker right here has caught a bunch of fish. I've caught tons of fish on this rig and it still holds up there's some bend in the wire but it still holds up and i boat flipped some big fish you saw me boat flipping big right. in a day right. and so i really trust that smash tech smash rig um and by the way guys smash tech baits link below so all the stuff we talk about from them you can get at that website below the rods we're talking about six inch rods and these jig heads we're going to talk about in a minute you can get those at six fishing.com when you go to six cents fishing be sure you punch in the code your lake fort guide in the in the promo box on the checkout screen and you'll get a 10 percent discount on all orders all right so today we're throwing the eight blade i do throw the floor four blade as well i don't really have a direct rhyme or reason i just kind of you know, if I'm throwing an Alabama rig and I feel like I really ought to bite it and they're not biting the eight blade, boy, I'll switch to the four blade. I'm usually throwing the eight blade more times than not, though. And I've found the same 
I don't know whether it's a lack of clarity in these lakes because there were many times on the west coast crystal clear water I got off all the blades and just wanted to silent um, that was really a trick on the west coast yeah. so I think it has to do with water clarity probably Fish so are feeding more on a lateral line more vibration so this yep. is going to give you more vibration right and then for the baits that I use I'm going to tell you there's a million swim baits and it doesn't really have to be anything special about the swim bait but you'll be hard pressed to find one better yep than the smash tail junior which by smash tech which is this one right here this is a little six cents hollow belly always like to have one that stands out from the others uh it, and it can be a different color than this this is another shag color but you guys can tell that's a different looking bait it just looks different it just needs to be something subtly different even if you just take and put chartreuse tail on one of your baits do something to make one of them stand out give them something to key in on in this big ball of mess that you got going here yep. now six cents jig heads to me are a big deal mike i think they're a big deal if you're going to throw the open hook jig head this is the only one to throw and i'm going to tell you why there's a lot of moving parts on here yeah and there's a lot of stuff that can tear up a whole lot and on jig heads that just have a little keeper hook keeper yeah, or whatever yeah, little, little man them fish keeper. will tear your baits off of it if you're yeah. fishing grass edges every time you make a mistake and hit the grass it'll rip your bait off of it and you're constantly redoing five different baits yeah, i throw them off and you spend so much time fiddling with your baits that yeah. you lose a lot of fishing yeah. time well six cents fishing went ahead and solved that problem for us looks like they solved it real good too if you look right here they've got that screw lock on that jig head that big screw lock yep oh yeah it's a good it holds them good now this bait's been chewed on and worn out on and we caught a bunch of fish on it today but what i'm gonna do right here is show you how to rig this up it is a little more labor intensive getting them rigged up but man once you got them on there you save so much time so you just run up there like you normally would find the spot where your hook will come out make sure it's on straight and then all you do is just start twisting and the tails on these little smash tails will just kind of go with it as you twist now if you were screw locking a crawl or something on here, it'd be a little different. You'd have to manipulate the legs. But with the Smash Tail Junior, it just slides right up on there like it was made for it. And you just keep twisting until it's good and snug. And really, the main thing is I want to make sure that I don't have my bait kinked up this way. I want to keep screwing until my bait gets flat like that right there. See how my bait's running straight right here? That's the big deal. I don't want my bait to still be kicked up on the tail like this where the tail's kind of funky looking. Yep. I don't know if that makes a difference, but it bothers it me. It does. It changes the suit. So that's how you screw that on there. You saw how simple that was. I mean, for the time that it saves you. Now, once that bait's on there, you can literally go days and days and days catching fish on the same plastic. Unless one just happens to bite your tail off, you're going to keep the same bait on there. This bait's been on this jig head for about two months. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. So that's, awesome. that's the mainstay. That's the old top hook, open hook, jig head, swim bait, uh, Alabama rig that we all throw. Well, I hear, I hear that there's there's a weedless version. Well, let's talk about that. Now that that we throw that, you know, on road beds and bridge pilings and aprons, and when I can get away with it, I like to the regular this, throw this the open here. hook. Yeah. Um, because I mean, naturally, your hookup ratio sure is gonna. I don't know that it is any better because I catch them just fine on the weedless version, but that one does, you know, in my head, it's just odds are I'm going to get a better hookup ratio. Sure. So let's talk about this now. When you go to uh, Lake Fork or a lot of East Texas lakes, a lot of lakes across south in general, there's going to be some timber. Maybe there's some brush piles, maybe there's some dock pilings. Well, man, them open hooks, if you make a mistake and bump that timber or bump that dock piling or anything like that, boy, that sucker, it's going to grab it. And it's gonna grab it in a heartbeat uh, and then you got a you know it's quite a bit of money when you add everything up on there yeah. um, you, you don't certainly don't want to lose one you know so so what we started doing on fork uh, years ago and you know what was funny is I had a guy show me this and it's got another guy on Lake Fork showed me this but the funny part about it was I was literally at like when he showed me I had this thing in my head where I'm like, man, I need to rig it like this. We can throw it in them trees. And then sure enough, right as I started thinking that way and I was, you know, kind of starting to play with it a little bit, he, he showed me this deal. But, I, you know, we've been doing this for, for a lot of years now and it works really good. You know, uh, especially if you can see the tops of your trees. If your lake's a little low, if your lake's new and you can see most of your treetops, what you can do is take just an old belly weighted swim bait hook and rig that on there and what you the big deal is you want to make sure that you poke this this hook all the way through like this but you want to make sure that you get it back skin hooked okay back in the plastic 
and that's a big deal you don't want that hook exposed to light pressure but yet when a fish bites it it pops right out I just put a little pressure there and it popped out now with this you can make a slight mistake oh yeah you can bump a limb you can bump the top of a brush pile you can hit a tree and the only way it's ever going to hang up is when this deal wedges into a cross member of a branch or a cross member of a dock or something like that you can actually take this bait when the lake's a little bit low and throw it low and hard and throw it up under docks jack Ooh. and you talk about catching some fish Ooh. something they ain't seen i never thought of that i will take this bait weedless rig and, and actually low low roll cast it and get it now you can't skip it sure but i'll low roll cast it when the water's low and get it up under docks and catch the fire out of them i bet you do it to some of them bridge pylons too I do do it to them bridge pile lines. You darn right, right. I do that. <laughs> but uh, so when it's like this, it's real simple. Just don't pull, guys. I promise you. Just keep reeling that rig. When it's a fish, they'll load up on it and they will chew it to death, and you won't have no doubt. Like, don't set the hook if it's a tree, because it, it, there's just no reason. You can just keep reeling. The fish will come back and get it. Hundred percent. I was yeah. throwing this rig today, and I had a couple of fish that I did set the hook on, and I missed them. Missed them. And when I just kept staying steady, let let that rod load. No, no swing, no hook set. You didn't miss any of them. I didn't miss any of them. No. You, you'll see that. You may look like I laid in, but the fish was already there. He was already tick, pulling tick, it away tick, from it. I mean, it was tick, 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 load. <laughs> Then I yeah, the key is wait till you don't feel a bump, but you feel the weight. Yep. When they start really pulling on you, yep. on your rod, that's when you want to hit it. But when it gets hung in a tree like this, as long as you don't pull hard, right. it's real simple. This thing's got a lot of bottom weight. See that? Yep. So if I get anywhere within the vicinity of that deal and I let my line go slack while I hold my rod kind of up. Keep clunk. Okay, so my, my line's going out this way. When I let my line go slack, you see that? Yep. And you just keep easing it and it'll ease through and if it doesn't you can get right over the top of it and it'll just lift right out, out. and you know i've never lost one i've never lost one of these rigs rigged like Throwing this through the wood never yeah. typically if it does you're going to get most likely be stuck shallow anyway somewhere yeah. where you can get back but the deal on this is you can put this in places the fish aren't used to seeing it yeah you know like there's a, there's a lot of places that you know jerk baiting's a big deal on lake fork in the winter time and we've been talking a lot about that lately and ronnie kelly boy he's great at that jerk bait and he loves doing it but I'm going to tell you what's funny is if we compare notes, some of the same places he goes and throws these jerk baits. Yep. over the years I've gone in the wintertime and thrown that weedless Alabama rig because those fish like to suspend around these big, big oak trees on these secondary points and creek bends and stuff like that. And when those fish are suspending, man, he can throw that jerk bait all he wants to. He's going to catch one at a time. Hey, Jack, if there's a couple of them in there, I'm going to get all of them. Told you he's coming for you. Captain Ron, <laughs> he's coming for you, Captain Ron. Old Ronnie Kelly, good buddy of ours, and a great, great, great guy. He's back to full-time guy, and now you guys definitely check him out. But um, so that's the deal, man. You take it places you would throw a jerk bait, or you know maybe you're fishing a jig, and you think those fish might be suspended. They ain't biting a jig. Well, now you've got a tool that you can attack those tough bite suspended wintertime fish with around that timber that you, you really couldn't do before. So I got a cool little tip too. I want to show you. Some guys don't like the Alabama rig. What do you do with it? How do you put it away? It's awkward. It's awkward. awkward. How do you put it away? I mean, over the past probably 10 years, I've fumbled with a lot of different options. I've even had rigs um, that have been made with with a little uh, split ring up up on this top here, so that you can pull the split ring down and and close this up a little bit. But then you still got your baits all over the place. I'm gonna show you what I found in the past 10 years is the most easy way to do. Is I'm gonna take this middle hook right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set that on my reel or my hook keeper. I'm going to snug it up. I'm going to grab the rig. I'm going to kind of get it by the head right there. I'm going to go to Bass Pro Shops. Give me one of these little packages. It's a little Velcro package. It's real simple. It's a bait keeper package. All right. And then I take this guy and I just lay it right over all them baits. You can put it in a position. I'm going to put it a little low right now. But you can put it in a position where it'll even protect all the baits, protect all the hooks. Um, and your lock there it doesn't go nowhere. You don't have to worry anymore When you put that in your rod locker about a mess not blown up open So that's my best tip for an Alabama rig right it's there. It's pretty slick rig right there. Pretty cool. Works out real well Well, I'll tell you what Mike. I'm gonna get up here on the front deck and uh, I'm gonna show these guys kind of how to retrieve it and how to control the depth of it um, And get some of these suspended fish to bite trick them a little bit. Let's do it all right guys first thing you're going to do is cast it right so there's there's two things that are really important when you're alabama rig fishing number one is making a long cast you, these fish will follow that alabama rig you got to give them time to follow it unless you're casting to a target like a bridge apron or a dock piling or a stretch of timber and even when you're doing those 
I suggest that you cast it well past it and give it some lead time. They like to look at it, it's just like a swim bait. They like to look at it and follow it before they commit to it. So we're not just gonna be like a spinner bait and whip that sucker out there. It's a heavy rig. You can see it bowing that moderate tip on that rod right there. You wanna kinda let it load up and throw it kinda to the sky at about a 45 degree angle is how you wanna do it. Just like that. Now we got some pretty tall grass in here so I gotta start reeling real quick. But one of the things you wanna do like you can control there's two things that will control the elevation level of your Alabama rig. Number one is the speed you turn the reel handle. And number two is the height of your rod tip. If I wanted to stay up high in the water column, I can hold that rod up. And here's the deal. When these fish bite, we're letting them load up. So you don't have to hold it down here to get a good hook set. Because you can hold it up here and just let them load against your rod and just kind of reel down to them and load them up. It, you don't have to have that rod in a hook set type position to get them hooked up. Now. What I like to do with this rig is I like to go as slow as I can while keeping the, the A-rig in the desired depth. So today, for instance, we were fishing a grass edge in 10 foot of water. Well, I wanted that rig to get down there four or five feet. I didn't want it going to the bottom and hanging in the grass. I didn't want it right under the surface. I also wanted to move it as slow as possible. So for today, my retrieve was such. I'd make my cast, wow that reel needs some oil, I'd make my cast but then I would hold my rod up and I'd reel pretty quick until I felt a little grass and I'd speed up a little bit and I'd just hold my rod up just like this. I'd hold it as high as I could and as my line got shorter I'd start lowering my rod and slowing my reel, lower my rod and slow my reel and just kind of feathering it down like that right there. I wouldn't count it down, I didn't want it sinking, it only needed to drop four or five feet and I could accomplish that by holding my rod tip and slowing it down. I actually had to hold my rod tip up because I was reeling it so slow because I wanted to creep it. These are wintertime fish. They're not just jumping at the bait. Let them look at it a long time. That's what they want to do. Now, if I was fishing, let's say we're on Lake Fork and I'm fishing a road bed in 20 foot of water, 22 foot of water just because that's the exact depth of one of the road beds I like to fish. That grass will let go. Mike, get that grass off. Grass eater. My man, watch your hook. So let's say I'm fishing a road bed in 22 foot of water. And, and those fish are sp suspending just a few feet off the bottom off the brakes of said road bed. I'm actually gonna make that long cast I'm going to make that long cast and then I'm just going to let the bait sink all the way to the bottom. Now, if this is a brush pile laden or a real rocky kind of road bed, you might want to go with the weedless rig here. If it's just a flat paved road bed real clean, go with the open hook deal. Once that bait's on the bottom, I'm now going to point my rod down and I'm just going to start medium retrieving. Right here I'm dragging up grass so I'm getting a lot of resistance. But if I was on that road bed, I'd just start medium retrieving. And I'm just going to hold that rod down. And when that fish bites, he's going to go thunk, and I'm not going to do nothing. And he's going to thunk, and I'm not going to do nothing. And he's going to thump it, and it's going to start loading. I'm just going to start reeling faster and turn. And that's all I'm going to do. I don't want to be jerking on it. I don't want to be ripping on it. If I can just slowly turn, and remember, guys, <laughs> if you can let one load up and just keep reeling without pulling him, you're liable to get a second one on there. So, guys, that's what it's all about, man. It's all about using your rod height and your reel handle to have ultimate control of your depth. You know, on these rigs with, you, I like to rig them with eighth ounce jig heads, sometimes quarter ounce. So they were using quarter ounce because I wanted to keep it moving and just keep it kind of drifting down. Uh, but you can use either size. Here's the deal though, you gotta be familiar with that. If you've got eighth ounce heads on there, it's gonna sink about a foot a second. If you got quarter ounce heads on there, it's gonna sink about a foot and a half a second. So if you're wanting to let it drop to a certain depth before you start reeling and then try to maintain that depth, that's perfect, perfectly acceptable way to do that. I tend to like to let mine glide down and glide up. I want it to be like a natural ball. I don't want it to fall and then just start. I like to just start reeling and go really, really slow with my rod tip down till I'm at my depth, that I, till I feel like I'm at the depth I want to be at. And then I'll kind of pick my rod tip up and just keep that slow reel going because again, I want to move it slow as possible. But I like my Alabama rig to fall as natural as possible like a little school of bait. Drifting down and just kind of drifting along and then just kind of easing up. A school of bait's not going to go. 
That's not what a school of bait will ever do. So. Perfect. We got the little smash tail juniors on the six inch jig heads. Hey guys, how y'all doing in here today? Well, Mike, man, appreciate you hanging out with me today, talking about the awesome Alabama rig. Day. Awesome day. Man, this guy, he is one of the offshore experts. Uh, whether it's catching them or just talking about electronics or just learning how to map them out and how to use the tools in your boat to really attack the fish efficiently. He is as good as anybody I've ever known at doing that. So if you guys are wanting to learn how to catch some of these offshore suspended fish throughout the winter months, uh, I highly suggest giving this guy a ring. Uh, his websites are linked below. He's at thelakefortguide.com, The Lake Fort Guide on Facebook, and The Lake Fort Guide on Instagram as well because he's The Lake Fort Guide. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Absolutely, man. Thanks for hanging out with me today, buddy. Had a ton of fun. It was awesome. Caught a lot of fish on that day rig. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It's really exciting. Really, really exciting, you know, and, and, and hats off to Heath Taylor at Smash Tech. Um, you'll see in the video why I say that. It, that uh, that's the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Those Smash Tails were the deal the today. Deal. Yes, the deal. No yes, doubt sir. about it. Thank you. So you guys go check those baits out. They're all linked below, like we said earlier. Hey, most importantly, thank you guys so much for watching this video, hanging out with us. We sincerely hope that uh, something we taught you here today or something we talk, I don't want to say talk because I don't feel like I know enough to be teaching, but something that we discussed here today, maybe it's a tip you haven't heard of before, and, and maybe it can be a little trick that can help you catch more fish. That's our deepest, most sincere wish out of doing all this. That's right. Absolutely. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up for today. I'll quit rambling. Me and Mike are getting cold again. I was going to say, it's just starting to get cold again, Daddy. It's, you know, we're starting to get... Freezing cold got real nice, and now... We're getting shade on us, so it must be time to go time get... to go home, get some warm food. Got to go get that belly wide, yeah, son. Yeah, baby. Yes, indeed. We'll see you guys next time right here. What are we going to see on Mike? Right here on your Lake Fork Guy.